The Institute for Creation Research is a creationist apologetics institute in Dallas, Texas that specializes in media promotion of pseudoscientific creation science and interpretation of the Genesis creation narrative as a historical event. The ICR adopts the Bible as an inerrant and literal documentary of scientific and historical fact as well as religious and moral truths, and espouses a young Earth creationist worldview. It rejects evolutionary biology, which it views as a corrupting moral and social influence and threat to religious belief. The ICR was formed by Henry M. Morris in 1972 following an organizational split with the Creation Science Research Center .Its work in the field of creation science has been rejected by mainstream science, but has been significant in shaping creationist thought in the United States by introducing creation science through fundamentalist churches and religious schools, and by engaging in public debates against supporters of evolution. The ICR also offers non-certified graduate-level programs in biblical apologetics, including a minor in creation research. In 1992, the ICR started the Museum of Creation and Earth History and hosted adventure tours, but it was sold to Life and Light Foundation in 2008. History The origins of the ICR can be traced to the Creation Science Research Center set up by Henry M. Morris, along with Nell and Kelly Seagraves, at the Christian Heritage College in 1970. However, the Seagraveses and Morris disagreed on the focus of the center, with the Seagraveses favoring political and promotional activities, whilst Morris favored educational and scientific efforts. This led to the breakup of the center in 1972, with the Seagraveses taking control of the center and severing ties with the university, with Morris reorganizing the remaining staff into the Institute for Creation Research. The ICR defined its work in terms of three ministries research, writing, and speaking. Historian of science Ronald L. Numbers states that. D. Despite its name, the Institute for years conducted little research outside the confines of its modest library, and cites founding member Duane Gish as explain -ing apologetically in 1978, that the staff devoted much of its research effort to scouring the scientific literature for references favorable to creationism. Numbers does note that it engaged in a number of archaeological and geological expeditions, including two in search of the mythical Noah's Ark, with geologist Stephen A. Austin, working as an off and on visiting scientist until taking a full staff position in 1979, single handedly conducting most of its non literary research. Influential scientific creationist Walter E. Lamets complained that he main trouble is that Henry looks at this whole thing as a sort of missionary effort rather than a scientific one. It maintained tax exempt status as a religious institution carrying out non scientific research. In the early 1980s, the ICR severed its ties with Christian Heritage College to downplay its religious connections and portray itself as a secular scientific institution. Ken Ham, a speaker and former high school science teacher in Australia, once worked for the ICR producing a series of seminars, Back to Genesis. In 1994 Ham left ICR to found what would become Answers in Genesis AIG. Currently, at least one ICR staff member is also on staff at AIG. In 1985, the ICR helped Turkey's education minister VB Dinsola introduce Islamic creationism in Turkish high schools. In 1987, the ICR's statement of belief was cited in the U.S. Supreme Court ruling of Edwards v. Aguillard. Justice Lewis F. Powell Jr. wrote that. If no valid secular purpose can be identified, then the statute violates the Establishment Clause." He continued noting information on ICR and Creation Research Society including, "...a review of their goals and activities sheds light on the nature of creation science." He then explained, "...the intent of the Louisiana legislature was to promote a particular religious belief." And the court ruled that teaching creationism was unconstitutional. In 2007, the institute relocated from Santee, California, to Dallas, Texas. 
Morris, who died the previous year, said the move was intended to give the ICR a central national location, Dallas proximity to a major airport, and a larger population for their ministry. For FI 2007, the institute had net assets of $7,613,461. In 2009, the ICR had a revenue of $8,042,283 with net assets of $9,857,656. Research and publications In a 1995 review of work published by ICR researchers, Douglas J. Fuchimer writes, "...neither in the creationist literature nor in the scientific literature have I found any reference to professional research by these individuals in genetics, paleontology, taxonomy, anatomy, or any of the other fields most relevant to the study of evolution." He found their work most often published instead by an overtly religious publishing house, Creation Life Publishers. The institute also publishes a monthly magazine Acts and Facts devoted to articles, "...dealing with creation, evolution, and related topics." The work of the ICR is primarily distributed through religious settings as well as before public audiences in live debates with scientists and other supporters of biological evolution. ICR launched the Jonathan Park radio drama series based on a book of the same title. Production of the radio program was transferred to Vision Forum Ministries in 2004. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Master Books. Master Books is a division within Creation Life Publishers, another enterprise Morris helped to found. It serves as the publishing arm of the Institute for Creation Research, and specializes in theology and creation science works. Master Books anti-evolution books are in wide distribution, promoted by most of the large creationist organizations as well as the ICR. <laughs> <laughs> School and accreditation In June 1981, the ICR received formal state approval in California to offer degree programs, and its first graduate level courses were taught in the summer of that year. In 1988, the ICR sought re approval. A five person committee from the California Department of Education sent to evaluate ICR's degree program found its graduate school consisted of only five full time faculty and some courses were videotaped rather than professor led instruction. The committee failed to grant re-approval by 3-2 vote, a move the ICR attributed to «religious intolerance» rather than criticisms of the quality of education it provided. This resulted in California's state superintendent of public instruction barring the institute from granting master's degrees in science, which encompassed their existing graduate degree programs in the teaching of biology, geology, astrogeophysics and science. ICR filed a lawsuit against California's state superintendent, Bill Honig, and was awarded a settlement of $225,000 and given permission to continue its program until 1995 so long as it continued to teach evolution alongside creationism. The original agreement expired in 1995, and California Bureau for Private Post-Secondary and Vocational Education granted the ICR religious exemption from post-secondary school requirements in California. In 1982, the ICR received accreditation from the Transnational Association of Christian Colleges and Schools TRACS. According to Morris, TRACS and ICR founder, TRACS is a product of the ICR Graduate School and was created because of the prejudice against creation science. Outspoken creationist schools such as ICRGS used to stand little or no chance of getting recognition through accreditation. TRACS was officially recognized as an accreditor by the U.S. Department of Education in 1991. Following the ICR's move to Dallas, in November 2007, TRACS terminated its accredited status after the ICR requested its termination. 
Texas does not recognize TRACS accreditation. The ICR's relocation to Texas required Texas state approval or accreditation by a regional accrediting agency, in this case Southern Association of Colleges and Schools In 2007, the ICR applied for a temporary state certification there which would have allowed the institute to operate while it pursues accreditation through SACS. In December 2007, the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board received an advisory committee recommendation to allow the ICR to start offering online master's degrees in science education. The board originally planned to decide on the issue at their January 2008 meeting. At the time it applied, ICR Graduate School had approximately 30 to 50 students, most teachers from private Christian schools or home schoolers, and four full time faculty. After seeking the advice from an independent panel, the chairman of the Texas Board requested information about the research conducted by the faculty, how an online program would expose students to the experimental side of science, and asked why. Air curriculum doesn't line up very well with the curriculum available in conventional Master of Science programs. Subsequently, the ICR asked the THECB to delay its decision until their next meeting, on April 24, 2008, to give them time to respond. Inside Higher Ed reported, lobbying by scientists against the Institute, and by others in its favor is going strong. The Dallas Morning News obtained some of the messages sent to the board and published a number of examples and summaries that illustrated how intense the debate had become. Following the response from the ICR to the board, Stephen Schaeffersman, of the Texas Citizens for Science, reported that the ICR sent out prayer requests and is currently arguing a creationist derived distinction of science in their application for approval. On April 23, 2008, Education Board's Academic Excellence and Research Committee unanimously voted against allowing the ICR to issue science degrees, citing, The Institute's program is infused with creationism and runs counter to conventions of science that hold that claims of supernatural intervention are not testable and therefore lie outside the realm of science. On the following day the full board unanimously voted against allowing the ICR to issue science degrees. The decision was based the recommendation on two considerations. ICR failed to demonstrate that the proposed degree program meets acceptable standards of science and science education. The proposed degree is inconsistent with coordinating board rules which require the accurate labeling or designation of programs. Since the proposed degree program inadequately covers key areas of science, it cannot be properly designated either as science or science education. The ICR said it would appeal the decision saying the education board was guilty of viewpoint discrimination. Instead, in April 2009, the ICR sued the THECB in federal court for imposing an unconstitutional and prejudicial burden against ICRGS's academic freedom and religious liberties, and asked for the ability to award science degrees. In June 2010, a judge ruled in favor of the Texas Higher Education saying the ICR is entirely unable to file a complaint which is not overly verbose, disjointed, incoherent, maundering and full of irrelevant information. The judge concluded. The court simply comes to the conclusion, which is inescapable, that the THECB decision was rationally related to a legitimate state interest. Quote, in the September 2010 ICR newsletter, Henry Morris III, the ICR's chief executive officer, wrote, ICR's legal battle is over. After the judge ruled in favor of the Texas Board, in 2010, the ICR Board of Directors voted to close the ICR Graduate School and open a school of biblical apologetics, offering a Master of Christian Education degree with creation research being one of four minors. The ICR noted that, due to the nature of ICR's School of Biblical Apologetics, a predominantly religious education school it is exempt from licensing by the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board topic criticism topic 
Scientific criticism Young Earth creationism is rejected by nearly all scientists, including most scientists who hold to Christian faith with more than 45 science organizations having criticized creationism as not science. Professor Massimo Piliucci, a professor of ecology and evolution at the State University of New York at Stony Brook, has criticized ICR for professing to present the same science as that taught in secular universities while at the same time requiring students and faculty to sign a statement of faith to ICR's fundamentalist religious mission, most notably in affirming conformity in all its work to biblical doctrine. Piliucci notes that any research conducted within the ICR's policy framework is prescribed at the outset by biblical literalism, and thus antithetical to the methods and framework used by scientists. As examples, Piliucci cites ICR scientist Harold Slusher resorting to non-Euclidean and non-Einsteinian explanations of light travel to reconcile the vast distances light travels in space with the brief timescale given in young Earth creationism, and the association adopted by the ICR between the second principle of thermodynamics and the Bible's account of the fall of Adam. Piliucci further claimed that some of the historical claims found in the ICR Museum are also stunning and show how easily ideology gets the better of accuracy." On January 7, 2007 the National Center for Science Education reported that Grand Canyon, a different view, edited by Tom Vale and published by Master Books, the publishing arm of the Institute for Creation Research, and described as promoting, "...a young Earth creationist view of the geology of the Grand Canyon." was facing new scrutiny by public employees for environmental responsibility in December 2006. The chief of the Park Service's Geologic Resources Division recommended its removal on grounds that it "...does not use accurate, professional and scholarly knowledge, is not based on science but a specific religious doctrine, does not further the public's understanding of the Grand Canyon's existence, and does not further the mission of the National Park Service." A report by the National Center for Science Education, written by chemist Karen Bartelt was critical of the ICR representatives and displays in the museum. Topic: <coughs> <coughs> Criticism from Old Earth Creationists. Old Earth Creationists are opposed to the ICR. Gary North opposes the ICR on the grounds that they think a second principle of thermodynamics contradicts evolution, and John W. Robbins considers the ICR's activities a «fraud». The Old Earth Creationist Organization Answers in Creation criticizes the ICR, including a critical review by Kevin R. Henker, Ph.D. of the ICR's dating claims. Henker concluded that the ICR's «research» was improperly conducted and was unsuccessful in adequately separating the volcanic glass from the much older minerals." Another creationist opponent of ICR and its doctrine is Hugh Ross, who accepts the scientific consensus of a 4.54 billion-year-old Earth and is critical of ICR's cosmological models as well as their attempts to solve the starlight problem. <laughs> Criticism over awarding degrees. The ICR attracted much opposition when it sought approval in Texas to operate a master's degree program in science education. An April 2008 survey by Texas Freedom Network showed the majority of science faculties in Texas are opposed to ICR's request to issue science degrees with 185 of respondents opposed to certifying the program and 6 in favor. Officials of the Institute state their goal is to integrate biblical creationism with science. Since their program is intended to prepare students who are or will become teachers, the developing program is controversial. In public statements ICR officials say that scientific literacy will be emphasized, but science advocates critical of the ICR say the Institute's true goal is to restore religious creationism to science classes in the public schools equals equals notes